gon' believe in yourself, huh? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Who else gon' believe in you? Believe in yourself. Hey everybody, welcome to the Manny Hall Show. No, 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 this is not Hey TV. Don't get that confused. <laughs> She's on my show this time, okay? But you are going to come on my show, Yes, right? yes, yes, definitely. Whenever okay. you're ready. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay. But as you can see, I am on the couch. I am on the famous couch. This is just not the Hey V TV show today. <laughs> so all of her viewers, all of her followers and fans... She's on the Manny Hall Show, and I'm excited, just more excited than you probably are watching this, because now Valencia gets a chance to tell her story. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what that is, Manny. <laughs> hey, we're going to talk about it, and you're going to okay. see it, and you're going to watch the interview like, oh, that's what he was talking about. Okay. So, all right, y'all. Anyway, Manny Hall Show, Valencia Joy. Peace. Hey, sis, how are you? Good. How are you, Manny? Oh, amazing. Please tell the people your name and what you do. Uh, my name is Valencia Joy, and um, I do a lot. I am the founder of HeySis.org. We are a women's um, empowerment organization. We are faith-based. Okay. And um, I like to give the tagline, it's where broken women come to heal and healed women come to help. Um, it's super dope. I love all the ladies at HeySis. And... Uh, my newest venture is Hey VTV. I am on my couch, Represent. My, my set, Represent. <laughs> which is um, a YouTube internet show that I started at the top of the year. I love it. Now, I have to tell you, I always wanted a Hey Sis shirt, but... <laughs> I don't make the boy colors. I know, and, but and other than just being boy colors, like I don't want to walk around with a Hey Sis shirt. I know. I want a Hey Bro. So, I got you. Here's what and you know do. what? Can I, yeah, can I say it. Men say that to me all the time. Well, like, where is Hey Bro? Okay, then. Like, you like, heard it enough times, then. What I'm sure, sir. Okay, I got you. But I'll even put the money down for one. Like, okay. I, I want my Hey Bro shirt. <laughs> got you. Um, maybe, like, in a black and then, like, the Hey Bro in the white and the gray on the, on the front. I don't like black. Okay, so what color are you thinking? Can we do blue? Navy. Okay. Royal. Okay. 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 Either one. Hey, sis has even asked me to do black shirts. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> look at the colors. Look at the colors. The black don't fit right there. But okay. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate it. But anyway, so I love what you're doing. Um, super fantastic. I was definitely blessed the first time I was able to... Uh, interact with you on social media to see the stuff that you posted oh, questions wow. you were asking and just the engagement and you was like super goofy too <laughs> so like it was like done in a very different way thanks man yeah yeah like i loved it though. but you weren't like just like you know hey you know everybody I like, am goofy. Like, go for it with your life everything's gonna be good and then the next post would be like Man, it was a cat just ran yeah. down the chimney and I kicked it. And I'm like... But it's it's all true. Like, the craziest, <laughs> most random things happen to me. The craziest, most random things. I love it. <laughs> nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with that at all. So, why did you even get started with Hey Sis? Oh, man. Um, I have been through a lot. Um, I was going through um, a very bad divorce. Okay. Um, And... It was the strength of my sister girlfriends that got me through. Gotcha. I always, always tell the story of how um, my divorce almost broke me. If anything could kill you mm -hmm. or kill me, it would have been my divorce. And they were there to, you know, make sure I was okay, yeah. make sure I had strength, make sure that my faith was up, make sure that I brushed my teeth mm. <laughs> on the, the right really now. bad day, mm -hmm. made sure that, you know, I ate, I lost a lot of weight. I mean, I just, I went through it and they were there to make sure I didn't stay there mm. and that I didn't die there. Mm. And the greatest, um, one of my most favorite Bible stories, and I'm drawing a blank because I'm actually kind of nervous talking to you. But um, he had to have his hands up. Mm, okay. 
in order for them to win. And yeah, he was getting that. tired. Yeah. It was his friends that helped hold his hands up mm. and prop him up to continue. And having your hands up is um, a posture of worship mm. and a posture of surrender. So, um, Don't get deep on him, V. <laughs> hey, I, I y'all like ain't know this side of V. She about to get deep on y'all. Stop. But I liken that to what I was going through at the time. Okay. Because no matter what you're going through, you still have to worship. You still have to surrender. I'm a I'm a faith based person. I'm a Christian. And these are my beliefs. Yeah, for sure. And there were just times when I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. And my girlfriends were there to make sure that I was still um surrendering to God. And through all of that, Hasis started. Gotcha. Because um we need each other, you mm. know, it, even if you're married, if you have children, if you have parents, all of that is great. All of those relationships are great. But friendships are important, too. That's and we right. aren't meant to walk this life alone. Yeah. So you have to find people that walk it with you the right way. Because there could have been I could have had girlfriends to tell me to slash three of his tires. Right. That's and not right. four. And that's probably going to be done tonight. Because <laughs> insurance don't cover that. <laughs> Say that. But, I had girlfriends that said, no, you know, let's pray for him. No, let's, mm. let's pray. No, let's read the Bible. Yeah. Let's, let's whatever. And that's that's important. Mm. That's good. Now, take me down the path logistically of when you started heavy. What do you mean? Like, so all the steps that you had to take um, in order to get to where you are right now. For heavy TV? Yeah. Um, so I put... Here's another sister girlfriend story. So I put it on Facebook like I need a show because I'm entertaining and mm-hmm. I have good things to say. say. <laughs> so, but I was kind of joking at the time, but I was um, like tagging Steve Harvey and Oprah, like give me a show. I need right. an AV TV. Right. And uh, one of my friends, Corey, reached out like, um, "You want a show? I have a camera. Mm. If you know how to put it on YouTube, let's do this." Mm. And we just started and it, it kind of grew like when we first started it was just this couch no mirror on the wall no nothing on the sides um bronson landrum was my very first guest represent what's up bro and we were here for like well over an hour trying to, try to figure it all out Corey had to show me how to edit it on um imovie and how to upload it on represent TV. the iMovie. I use it too. <laughs> represent yeah, iMovie. I mean, you gotta use what you have. That's it. But I, you know, I had good friends that were patient with me and willing to teach me and help me. And next thing I know, I had a little set. I had the lights and the camera, and we were ready to roll. That's what's up. That's what's up. So were you nervous to get started? I wasn't nervous interviewing because I love organic conversations okay so if we can just sit down and talk and talk and talk Mm -hmm. i could do it all day yeah my nerves came in when um number one when i started to edit because you have to decide was how to tell the story yeah exactly what Mm -hmm. what you can take out what should stay exactly um but the biggest nerves was when i posted it because that's when it gets into like is everybody gonna like me and what Mm -hmm. are people gonna think and will it get a lot of views right right that that was my biggest nerve that makes sense and you know since we both have shows we can kind of relate and talk yeah through some of that stuff too what is that iced tea nice is it got sugar in it? No, actually. Just no sugar iced tea. Mm-hmm. It's the light kind. So it's, I guess that's a little sugar. The, but not does light. that taste good, Valencia? Um, yes, many. <laughs> Have you just gotten used to it? Because it doesn't sound too good. It It is good, but I think I have just gotten used to it. But what I really want to do is just show you my pretty glass. <laughs> well, you did that. <laughs> So, you know, talking about these shows. Yeah. You said you weren't nervous, but then just thinking about, man, once I post it, like, what are people going to think? And, and and what were some of your thoughts during that time? Um, so I would get, like, this really uh, hot flash, sweaty moment okay. <laughs> when I began to okay. think, like, you know, are, is, is anybody going to watch? Is anybody mm-hmm. going to like it? Um, but then I kind of had to fight that with, you know... I know that the guy opened the door for me to do it. It may be small for other people, but it was big to me. That's it. And I'm just trusting him to do with it what I can. So 
the moment that um, he decides to take it further, I'm totally ready yeah, for him to for do sure, it. For sure. um, in the meantime, hey, I love my set. I love working with Corey. Mm-hmm. I love my guests. So yeah. I'm going to keep pushing. And, and like, so when you're doing your show, like, how do you feel? Because I think it's a feeling that, like, nobody else can really get unless they have their own show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, when yeah. you be honest, like, even while you're talking, I'm like, this is the Manny Hall show. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like that outburst of, of anger that's, like, being controlled. Because you're like, <laughs> this is dope for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to tell them, like, hey, hold up. Just be quiet real quick. <laughs> I'm about to praise God real quick. Yeah, it you know? is big. Yeah. It is big. Especially when, like, again, it's going back to faith. I just know that it's going to grow. Gotcha. And, you know, the couch will get bigger. That's and it. the lights will get bigger. And the camera will get bigger. But mm-hmm. I will always remember these moments when mm-hmm. I got to sit and giggle yeah. with my girlfriends on the couch yeah. and allow them to tell right. their stories. I right. love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and that's a really great thing. I mean, and that um, to think that you have a part to play in somebody's life being changed yeah. is dope. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy, but it's dope. Yeah, because it's like, for instance, um, like I've seen some of your guests that you had. Yeah. Um, you and Latoya was really good. You and Brass was really good. So it's just like you have this guest on the show. They're sharing their journey. Y'all just laughing, joking. Mm -hmm. But then somebody walks out of there like, Mm -hmm. man, Toya, Bronson, they really helped change my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, where'd you see that video? Oh, it was on Hey V TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You see where this thing goes? Yeah. Yeah, it travels. Yeah. It travels. Yeah. So it was just like um, that movie Pay It Forward. It's like. Okay, I have to stop you. Go ahead. You don't like that movie? A little known fact about me. You was, I, in, you was in the movie. No. I watch 150,000 movies. I don't remember any. So I probably watched Pay It For It. Don't remember. Okay. So, Sorry. <laughs> no problem at all. So let's talk about it. Pay It For It okay. was a movie with the little boy okay. and Kevin Spacey. Okay. And he was living with his mom, I think. Maybe another sibling, but maybe just with his mom. Mm-hmm. It was a homeless guy around the city. She he ended up letting the little um, the man in, and at first the little boy was sneaking, hiding him okay. in the garage. But then the mother eventually found out. They allowed the guy to come in, start feeding him. But then the little boy had an assignment at school, and it was how would you change the world? And he created this little project called Pay It Forward. Okay. It's saying that if everybody helps somebody then the world will change into a better place because everybody's thinking of what can I do for the next person. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So let me see if I still remember my thought. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So I just had to give a two-hour presentation <laughs> on the movie Pay It Forward to Valencia Joy. I'm sorry. For those that did not watch it, you got it. You understand. It sounds like a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying like you're paying it for it. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. But in more ways than just one, though. So it's not like you're just saying, hey, I'm going to allow you to be on my show for more exposure for yourself and just to talk about who you are. But then again, other people are watching that show and getting different things from it. Yeah. And then so it's like you're helping your show, you're helping this person, and you're helping somebody else. Yeah. That's dope. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's dope, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you should be you should be more excited about that because you you're a life changer, <laughs> Valencia. That yeah, that that comes with so much like um, like that gives me a little bit of anxiety. Okay, how so? Because there's so much responsibility. Um, I don't ever want to be the one to give the wrong advice or post the wrong show or yeah. um mess somebody up. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I that that's just, I take that responsibility very seriously even with um dealing with the sensitive to- topics that we discuss in yeah. hey, sis. Yeah. Um there's always a natural side, you know, that wants to say whatever pops off. Right. <laughs> right. right. But um because I I try to take it so seriously, I want to what does God want me to say? How does God want me to present this? Am I representing Christ? On the couch, am I representing Christ when I speak to Jesus? Am mm-hmm. I representing Christ when I'm walking through 
giant eagle. Yeah. You know, or the mall. So I, that's why it feels heavy for me. That makes sense. And it, and it should be, though. Because yeah. it's a humbling thing, you know, to Very. know that God is using you to change the world. Wow. Yeah. You know, like not Very just humbling. like help change Cleveland. But God is using you to help change the world. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. All right. Hold on. I need to take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the divorce. How did you use that pain effectively to not only help yourself, but help you birth? Hey, sis. Um, well, let me first say why I did. Okay. Versus how. Um, we share children. So it's not like, to me, divorce is a death. Mm. And when somebody dies, you have a mourning period. Um, but then, you know, life goes on. Right. But you don't see them right. anymore. Because he and I share children, we see each other often. We talk to each other often. We have to because yeah. we, we co-parent right. effectively together. And... I could not continue to look at him and be able to co-parent with um, hate or um, hurt. Makes sense. Because all of that festers into bitterness and that affects my children. Right. Um, So what I learned to do, and I think this is um, the best advice I can give anybody who is getting divorced and has children, is that, that while he is no longer my... Husband, I call him my husband because he was my husband. Okay. Um, he is still the father of my children. Yeah. And that's the role that he will forever play. Yeah. So um, we need stuff to be good enough for us to be able to co-parent so that our boys can grow up and hopefully not make the same mistakes that we made. Yeah. And hopefully make better relationship decisions and life decisions. That was good. So that was that was why. Yeah. And so now how? Did you do that? Prayer. Makes Prayer. Sense. And like I said, my sister girlfriends. And, um, you know, my it all goes back to my kids. Like, I want the best for them. So I have to fight to be the best me yeah. that I can be so that they can have the best. And, um, you know, it's not a perfect situation because divorce is not a perfect situation. Yeah. And um, divorce is not of God. So you, we've had to find... A new routine, but you know, thank God, we're able to still work together. We do birthdays together. We, um, our oldest just went to D.C. We handle that together um, as co-parents. Are you now balancing? Hey, V TV. Hey, sis. Hey, kids. Hey, and career. Hey dating. hey, dating. Man, it's a lot. It's a lot, and some days I do get overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to remember to just breathe. It'll get done. It That's may it. not get done in the rigid time frame that I've given it, but it will get done. That's it. Um, I've learned about self care. I did an interview with um Tara Pringle Jefferson or Jefferson Pringle. I can't remember. I think I think I know you're talking about. Yeah, she does self care and um anybody that's stressed out go check her out. Manny, you should interview her too. I wanna um, but I, we talked a lot about self-care and how important it is. It's just as important as my physical health. Um, it's just as important as, as Hey V T V, Hey Sis, my kids. Like I, I have to be well. So mm-hmm. when I feel that stress building up, I yeah. know to take a break. I know my triggers and I found things that, um, help me calm down a little bit, help me chill out a little bit. And then yeah. I'm able to go back. Yeah. I'm fortunate because my boys are older. I think when your kids are younger and they demand more attention, yeah. it's kind of harder to do more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're 13 and um, 14. So I'm able to say, yo, I'm closing my door. Don't knock on it unless the house is burning down. Right. And then we'll handle that. Right. Um, but for right now, I need to... Mm-hmm. My word is decontents. I made that up. I like it. That's what I say when I need to... Self care. Do you have the Do you have the correct spelling of that? Just in case I post that one day. D e c o n t e n s e. Let's do it. Let's go with that, Valencia. Decontents. Decontents. That's what I do. 
Um, but other than that, like, you know, I work a nine to five. I still managed to get dinner on the table. Um, like I said, we call parents, so they're Shout all out to the moms that put dinner on the table, though, and not just McDonald's and I'm about to go pick this up. Yeah. Although I feel them, shout out to those moms that do take the time to cook. Yeah. It, it's a lot. And it I, is. there are some days I don't do McDonald's, but we may do Boston Market. Yeah. But um, I do cook. I, I think. You know, healthy meals are important. We do sit down together. Are you a good cook, Valencia? Dinner. Heck yeah. You be throwing down? Yeah. So it ain't just one of the meals that the kids are going to love it because there ain't nothing else to eat. But like no. you really be in there getting it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Me and Marlia are going to have the potluck so okay. you all can see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I do make sure that we sit down together uh -huh. for dinner on my days and we talk about our day. Um. And what's going on. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of heavy things going on in the world. I'm raising two young black kings. Mm -hmm. So we have to have the heavy conversations, but we get through it. Yeah. Um, my grandmother just passed. I was helping my mom uh, care for her. And that caretaking for an ailing parent or grandparent is one of the most stressful things mm. ever. Wow. Ever. So I was doing that. And then dating. Oh, my God. First of all, I don't like it. Mm. It's not cool. It's not. No. There were moments like in the beginning, you know, when you come off a divorce. I was married for 12 years. So I was thinking like, I'm about to be a free woman and life is about to be great. Well, I am a free woman. And life is great, but dating life kind of sucks. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Does. Believe me, I know. Yeah, finding somebody that, you know, shares your values and morals um, and, and can support you the way you need to be supported. Mm -hmm. And these are all action things because yeah. people say so much. Yeah. But when it comes time to act on it. And I'm going to tell you why it's even harder, though. I don't know if you ever thought about this piece, but. You're not just Valencia Joy, but you're also Hey VTV, Hey Sis, again, Hey Kids. So all of these things have a huge part to play in your life. So it's just like a guy meeting you, it's not just meeting this little average chick at Highness. Yeah. Or whatever other grocery store y'all got, wherever y'all at. <laughs> That's a grocery store. Yeah. But it's like... There's so much more in you. So even like me being a man before Marlia was just like, you definitely got to send a guy because I don't know. Like I can go to the club. I can try to go to a bar. But not saying that they're not great people, but I don't know if I would be able to really pull marriage out of that. Chances might be slim. Yeah. But yeah. then it's just like, I really kept thinking about my brand and what I was doing. It's like, now, if I get with just anybody, will they screw up my future? Yeah. And I think for a woman, it's even deeper because um, it can be intimidating for men. Yeah. Even, even, if, even if I didn't have Hey Sis and Hey VTV and any new projects I may be working on, um... The fact that I am a single mom can be intimidating for yeah. men, I have found. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a guy tell me that, um, you know, because I'm so used to running my household and running yeah. my kids. And it, it, it it's like a business that, you know, when it comes down to dating, would I be able to date him and right. let him run things? And I had to kind of sit and think about that. Like, well, it all depends on how you run it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. if you run it in wrong... Right. We got to fix it. Yeah. But it's it's intimidating for guys. And I get it. Um, but it makes dating harder. It makes it to weed out, like you said, who's going to compliment my brand, who's able to come in um, and be a part of my family, mm -hmm. when to introduce him, you yeah. know, to my children. And yeah. that, I, I'm stressed out now just thinking about it. Yeah. What's a lot. It is. And then to think of the great relationship that you have with their father. Now, oh. well, I'm saying 
when I say great, not saying that it's like, I know, you know, I know, because most people just don't talk at all. So like coming into a situation, most guys are almost like, well, he ain't here. All right. Was he like, he ain't never come back here on around because as a man, you almost want to come in and you like really be the, the father man. and don't even have no participation from no other man. Cause you're like, I got this bro. Like you left her. I'm good. We don't need you. Wow. But it takes a lot of maturity for a man to really be able to step in. Because just to be honest, like, I hated the fact that Marlia talked to her kid's father. Really? Hated it. Really? Part of it was, like, not necessarily jealous, like, I think he gonna steal her. But, like, why are you around? Like, I don't want you. I, I don't need you here, bro. I'm gonna take care of your kids. Wow. I'm gonna teach them everything they need to know. Two boys. I don't need you. Hey, wow. I got kids of my own. I know, you know. So that's got to be hard for her too. Yeah, absolutely. Because they need their dad and your her husband. So, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Don't try to put me on the couch, Valencia. You had me <laughs> no. You, I'm sitting here like you think you slick. <laughs> you think you. <laughs> that's deep, though. That's deep. I've dated guys who have um, children, you know. So by default, a baby mama. Yeah. And it, it, it's been no static. Mm. Uh, the boys have my boys have not met anybody so you know I, I can't speak to that yet because yeah. we haven't gotten that far and again my boys are older so a lot of things that I think you and Malia's kids would kind of need yeah my kids don't anymore that's true that is true yeah. but that's gotta be rough yeah but I mean you know we are getting through it yeah but I think that like um even trying to balance the brands. I remember one time I talked to the guy and um, like we was getting into it over the phone. He was like, you think you Steve Harvey? And I'm like, you know what, bro? Just because I'm bald head and I'm talking about relationships don't automatically mean I'm trying to be Steve Harvey. Right, right. But, you know, I kind of understood what he was saying because he just was like really angry. Like, now you got my ex who I didn't want who I didn't see no value in. Now you didn't make this thing valuable that had no value at all to me. Now you got her and you got my boys and you're trying to be their daddy. Like, no, you still it's dead. A slap in the face. It's a slap in the face. And I think sometimes taking ourselves out of the equation really to look at their, how they feel as crazy as it might be, I understand. Yeah. That must be hard. Yeah. But that's something that you got to deal with and get used to just like I got to deal with my stuff, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it's like what you said, putting yourself in their shoes just to understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. I think that allows us to have more compassion for people yeah. uh, in their issues. Don't make it right. No, not at and all. stuff probably ain't going to change, but right. at least right. I know how to pray for you. <laughs> exactly. And like having an understanding of that's how you got to that place. Okay. That's, that's a little reassuring to me that it might not get better, but at least I, I, I get it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so back to Valencia, because this is not, I'm not a guest on your show right now. You're trying to hijack. <laughs> we can flip, we can flip. I see, we, we've been flipping. <laughs> you didn't even tell me we were flipping, though, but we flipped several times. <laughs> what motivates you? Oh, that's such a good question. My kids motivate me. Um... I have a I have a fear of failure yeah. that motivates me. Also, I have a fear of success um, that, in a weird way, motivates me. Makes sense. I, I always feel like something greater is coming. Like something mm -hmm. greater for me is just like I'm right on the cusp of it. Yeah. And I all I feel it. I you know I pray on it. Um, and that, that keeps me going, I love but it's, that. it's also a little scary because what exactly is it? The Valencia, I've never thought about this before, but this is on like some crazy deep stuff what I'm about to say. So okay. bear with me. Okay. So th your statement about like, I feel like it's so close, but then you know that scripture where it says like a thousand years is like a minute for the Lord. I know. Roll your eyes. Yeah. So what if... We feel it because it's like in our in his time is like that's three seconds, 
And we feel it because it's like so fast moving. It's like right now. Yeah. But then for him, it's like, oh, no, in your time, <laughs> that's about to take two years. Yeah. So I totally agree. That's kind of an annoying scripture. And I say that with the utmost respect for <laughs> Jesus Christ. But it's, it's very annoying. Um, I've been feeling it. Yeah. So I, I understand. But mm-hmm. it keeps me going. Gotcha. And I know that at one point when it does hit, like the, the moments that it's keeping me going, I'm constantly preparing mm-hmm. the best way that I can. Yeah. So when it does hit, um, not only will I be ready, but... I'll be able to look at all those struggle moments or those moments where maybe I wanted to quit Mm -hmm. or those moments when I was saying the Manny Hall, like is right around the corner Mm -hmm. and I'll be thankful for that because it did happen, Mm -hmm. you know? And again, I don't know exactly what it is. I, I call myself baby Oprah. That could mean that right around the corner is the big old TV show Uh, or the book that, you know, I'm trying to write or the, the God ordained relationship that, you know, I am longing for. It could be any number of things or it could be all of the things, but I do feel like I am super close, super close. 10 people that inspire you. 10? That inspire me? Oh, Lord. You may have to edit this part. It's going to be a lot of long spaces. It's okay. Um, my grandmother inspired me. Uh, she was a very strong woman, and she went through a lot. Even um, watching her, you know, towards the end of her life and yeah. her illness, and even in her passing, just how strong she really was mm-hmm. is inspiring to me. Uh, my mom... Is an inspiration to me. She's another strong woman um, who I think sacrificed a lot, not only for me, but um, for my cousin that she helped raise, for my grandmother that she took care of, you know, for um, a lot of other people that she didn't have to, you know. Uh, she was a single mom. So, and she didn't have uh, the same co parenting experience that I have. So, um, having to raise children by yourself totally. Yeah. And she did it. And I turned out pretty dope. I think so. And my brother, even though he gets on my nerves 99.9% of the time, is pretty dope as well. So she's an inspiration to me. Um, well, of course, Oprah. Michelle Obama. You know, strong black women. I'm proud to be a woman. I'm proud to be a woman. But I'm that much more proud to be a black woman. Hmm. And to be standing on the shoulders of women who helped build the foundation so I could do more. Hmm. I'm thankful for women like that. Maya Angelou. (sighs) How many was that? Yeah. My kids inspired me. Mm. Um, they have spoken to my life without even really knowing, you know, at the time what that means. Gotcha. Um, they always support me. They always push me. They tell me how great I'm doing when I'm doubting mm. what I'm doing, I even as it. a mom. You know, like yeah. they, just, they know. When I need that. Let's stop. Um, they definitely inspire me. Uh, that was seven. I feel like I don't want to say because I don't want to miss anybody. I know, and that's why people don't like this part. Yeah. And... Another known fact about me is I hate numbers. They give me anxiety. So Okay, so let's hurry up. <laughs> um, man, can we come back to that? You got three more for us here. It could be anybody that offers any kind of inspiration. A song they sing, a piece of art you saw, 
the postman because he always got a smile. My postman is always on his phone. Uh, hey, sis. Okay. The women of hey, sis. Awesome, awesome. Uh, because we've learned to be transparent with each other. Yeah. Which is very hard. We've built trust with each other so that we're able to kind of tell our stories and be honest about our feelings at the moment. Um, I feel like eight is the new ten. Like, why can't we just do? <laughs> if you want to stop at eight, we can stop at eight. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing that little exercise as part of the show. All right, now a couple more questions, then we're gonna wrap up. Okay. What fun things does Valencia like to do? Uh, well, you call me a goof, so I am really goofy. I laugh a lot. Um, comedy shows, hanging out with my kids, hanging out with my my best friend, Mel Wade, is one of the most hilarious people okay. in the entire world. So she can bring the cackle out like okay. nobody can. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just, I like to hang out. I like to be around my friends, be around my people. Are you a homebody? Yes and no. There, there's a term, I think it's ambivert. Okay. It's like you're a you're a introvert, but you have extrovert tendencies. Yeah. Or maybe it's vice versa. I don't know. But that's what I am. Like generally, I'm an introvert. So, but I can put on the extrovertedness. Yeah. When I need to, me but it too. it makes me tired at the end. Like I need to decontent. Yeah. After that. Uh huh. Um, but I'm a little bit of both. Okay, that makes sense. All right, now last one. Okay. Any last words for the people? Um, so what's been on my heart lately, and I posted it on, um, Hey Sis, is just faith. Mm. I'm, I'm big on faith. Even in my darkest moments, I have always believed that something greater is, is around the corner. And it has been. Yeah. When, uh, you know, I was super depressed. I didn't know that one day I'd be doing Hey VTV. Mm. I didn't know that one day I would have Hey Sis. I didn't know that one day um, I would even laugh again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but greater does come. And like I said, it, you know, to you guys, it might not be that big of a deal. But to me, it's super huge. Yeah. Um, so I always believe that greater is coming. I always believe that um, God loves little old me That's it. a whole lot. And that I am his daughter. Like I said, I didn't grow up with. Um, my parents got divorced when I was 12. And uh, when they split up, my dad left. And I used to tell God, like, I don't have a dad. I don't have a dad. I don't have nobody to, um, you know, defend me or get up in somebody's face mm -hmm. when somebody do me wrong. I don't have no big old dad lap to climb up in when yeah. I'm crying. And right. um, I think through everything that I've been through, God has shown me that he is my dad. Mm -hmm. And... The relationship that is constantly being built between he and I is is amazing. And I, I trust him. Somebody at um, Hey Sis a couple weeks ago said, you know, we trust God with our eternal life. But it, we find it hard to trust God with our everyday. Hmm. And that's where I'm at. I'm learning to trust him with my everyday. Because I don't know what I'm doing. That's and it. a lot of times it's hard doing this without a husband. Mm -hmm. And it's hard um it's it, it's hard doing this without a dad. Yeah. But I have God. And I'm trusting him for it all. So that's my final thought. Like find your relationship with God, find your relationship with Jesus Christ and build your faith. Build your faith because greater is coming even if you are in a great space. Hmm. Imagine that. God promises to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask, think, or imagine. That's it. I love it. That's dope. That is really dope. Okay, so, ladies, hey sis, you can find us on Facebook, 
Instagram, Twitter under at Sis Hey Sis. I am also on the interwebs at www.hasis.org where I blog and do all of that good stuff. We also hang out every Saturday, every third Saturday of the month. We call it our Hasis Hangout. And um, you can find more information about that um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the website. Uh, we hope to see you. We have a whole lot of fun. We have our t-shirts 100%. and keychains. And we have good food. We always have apple dip and lemonade. And we talk it out, which is important. And for everybody, men, women, boys, and girls, there is Hey VTV on YouTube. Please go to YouTube and subscribe. I need my subscribership up. I need my viewership up. Um, and I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under Hey v TV. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show, Valencia. Thank had you, an amazing time. I had fun. For sure, for sure. All right, now, Manny Hart Show. We out.